Hi guys, it's Steph here and this will be the first time that I will be doing a movie review. Yes, you heard that right. My boyfriend and I just checked out Spider-Man Homecoming and I wanted to share with you um, what I thought of the movie. So just as a disclaimer, I am not a movie critic by any way. What I'm going to share are just my personal views. But of course, I did a bit of research before doing this review just so I had a, I had a bit of a better idea how the, the movie fits in with, for, for example, the, the, the comics uh, universe and what happened there. So when I first saw the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer, it wasn't that, it didn't really feel that exciting to me. Maybe because uh, it, it wasn't like other trailers where you really got a feel of what you'll get from the movie. It showed that, you know, scene with um, Robert Downey Jr. and the car, so that was funny, but I didn't really get a feel of what was going to happen in the movie. But then again, that also added to the mystery of, of, of what you'll see in, in the Spider-Man movie. That being said, I, I didn't really do a lot of research before going to the movie, so no biases whatsoever. Well. Actually, I was talking to an office mate earlier this week and and I asked if, if Spider-Man was showing already and she said that it had a really high rating on, on uh, Rotten Tomatoes which I always check out before watching a movie. I really um, trust the, 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 the score there. So when I checked out Rotten Tomatoes, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming had a 93% tomato meter score and a 92% audience score. So wow, that, that doesn't really happen a lot. So definitely I, I had to make sure that the soonest weekend we would watch the movie. So the movie stars Tom Holland as Spider-Man and I was surprised because he's actually an English actor. Cinematography wise, I have absolutely no negative comments whatsoever. A Spider-Man movie is a Spider-Man movie and will be action-packed, dynamic, as always. Um, I didn't expect anything less than that. In terms of the music, I, I really loved how they use the Ramones Blitzkrieg bop. Hey, uh, I guess it was a good reference to uh, the comics we're in. Peter Parker is also a, a music lover. So what I guess that I liked uh, with this movie is that it's not your typical how Peter Parker got bit by a spider and turned into Spider-Man kind of movie. We've seen that in Sam Raimi and Mark Webb's rendition of, of Spider-Man Spider movies. So we already know, you know, the whole story of how he got bit by a spider and was trying to imp impress Mary Jane or, or Gwen Stacy, that sort of thing. So it was good that the interpretation of this Spider-Man was totally different. Well, it does come come from you know his appearance in, in Avengers Civil War, but uh, I, I was happy that they didn't show that part. But still, it's set with him in in high school. That's always very refreshing, and I think they really did a good job with the cast, especially with his uh, best friend uh, Ned Ned Steele. So Ned Steele is a Filipino. Well, he was born to Filipino parents, and he grew up in Hawaii. And I am very happy that there's a Filipino actor in the story, even if he's just playing a um, supporting role, but a very big role at that. Spoiler alert, so he plays the guiding chair for, for Spider-Man. And I like that there's like a sidekick who does like the, the tech stuff, the geeky stuff um, behind the scenes. So that really worked for me. And his portrayal was pretty authentic for me. He was like, he was like, uh, you know, Peter's friend, but that he he couldn't help but fanboy when he found out that you know Peter is actually Spider-Man, and at the same time, you know, he wants to get out of their you know loser loser status, um, their outcast status. But actually, if you watch the movie, you get an idea that that Peter and Ned aren't exactly you know the losers that they think they are. Well, for me at least, because they're part of uh, the decathlon team. He's a pretty smart dude and actually you get a hint that, you know, Liz actually, you know, likes him back because there is this part where she sort of stammers um, when, when he talks to her. I think the movie was successful in terms of, you know, portraying how Spider-Man was so in love with the idea of, uh, you know, possibly becoming an Avenger. So that sort of um, aspiration 
that you know he was sort of desperate already you know like he thought he was helping but then he, he wasn't really helping um, and then he didn't really do a lot of you know heroic kind of things in, in New York City. He was kind of like grasping at straws just to get to, you know, Tony Stark's attention. So I did a bit of research and I discovered that Ned Steele, if you look at the comics, he's actually a reporter at the Daily Bugle. I also liked that they did a refreshed version of Aunt May. I mean, she's always been portrayed as, you know, very faithful to the comics that the you know a kind of old lady um, but then in this movie Aunt May is like a super hot um, version with you know Marissa Tomei playing the part so I think that that was a you know a good a good twist in the story of course Michael Keaton playing Vulture was you know absolutely amazing and I, I couldn't help but you know think about his role as Birdman I also watched him in The Founder so that was, that was an absolutely amazing movie, you have to check it out. It's about how McDonald's um, was established. And that, for me, that really showcased how Michael Keaton is a really good good actor because it shows his, you know, his, his skills at being uh, the villain, sort of like the good guy turned bad guy kind of role, that sort of thing. So as usual, there are some things that are a bit consistent with Spider-Man movies, for example, um, in this movie, we see how Peter Parker is, you know, that overpassionate, eager, and uh, you know, a bit clumsy kind of geek. And then there's still that element of him having to choose between, you know, his his responsibilities as Spider-Man and balancing it with his personal life. So whether it be as a student, um, as in as in Spider-Man: Homecoming, or you know, other Spider-Man movies where. He's already a photographer at the Daily Bugle and a boyfriend to Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy. I absolutely loved how they did uh, this whole revamp, this upgrade with Spider-Man's suit. So in Spider-Man Homecoming, Peter Parker has an AI suit um, from Strike Industries. So in terms of the design, it had, you know, like huge block lines accentuating like the, the some of the lines uh, all over his suit. I also like how they added this thing with the suit where it's part of a, a training program with, with uh, the Stark Industries. So in terms of functionality, there is this assistant, like an AI voice, very similar to Jarvis. And at first, Peter calls her suit lady, but eventually he names her Karen. Interestingly enough, so a, a bit of trivia here, the, the voice is played by Jennifer Connelly who is actually married to the actor who plays um, Jarvis, well now Vision, in the Avengers series. So that, that was such a cool thing that I saw when I researched. I also loved how the suit had, you know, like these goggle type uh, eyes. So it also made, you know, Spider-Man more expressive when he has his mask on. I also like how the suit has like this uh, super high-tech functionality like uh, you know the the taser web so it really adds that whole spectrum of, of things that Marvel can play with when it comes to uh, Peter's web I also liked how you know that spider on his chest turns into a drone like it, it detaches from a suit and becomes a, like a flying spider drone which he calls drony that was super inventive for me very very um, innovative and a new and a new splash of you know inventiveness for the spider-man franchise so michael keaton as vulture so when i did a bit of research about uh the vulture in the comics uh, in the comic book series i discovered that there are some similarities he's a businessman and uh, he becomes a vulture out of revenge so there's like a betrayal um, betrayal story behind his transformation to to vulture and in the comic book series uh, it was actually a harness that he personally designed to become the vulture and then that's when he found his business partner was embezzling funds so he turns into the vulture out of you know anger revenge that sort of thing so that was a bit uh, consistent for me. Well, a little bit, yeah. So in the movie, there was this part where Michael Keaton shoots one of the, the alien gun thingies and it um, incinerates one of his guys. And 
I'm not sure if that was also the same gun that they used at the the fairy scene um, where you know he he, shire, he fires shots at, at Peter so I was kind of looking for it uh, if he would ever attempt to you know like incinerate spider-man too but I I'm not sure if that was the same gun so I got confused a bit there so overall I would give spider-man homecoming a nine because it did not have any you know, dull moments. It had fantastic casting, it had really good pacing, cinematography, everybody really portrayed their roles well. And I think it also showed you know, a good progression of Peter's maturity when in the beginning of the movie he was like fame, fame hungry. And then the latter part of the movie where he becomes more, I guess, more grounded, more rooted in his response, his desire to you know, become the friendly neighborhoods Spider-Man rather than a part of the Avengers. Although Tom Holland is actually scheduled to film, he's starring in the next Avengers film. He's definitely going to be there. And of course having Iron Man and Captain America in Homecoming, if that, that isn't a clue, I don't know what is. He's also scheduled to film, well actually he's currently filming the one for the, the 2019 release. So it's good to know that Tom Holland has a six picture deal with Marvel Studios. So he's set to appear in in Infinity Wars and in the 2019 Avengers film. So he's currently filming that. I am absolutely now a, a Tom Holland a fan and I can't wait to see more from the Spider-Man franchise and and to see his appearance in the in the future Avenger films. What sets this Spider-Man movie apart from the other Spider-Man franchises was that uh, it didn't showcase that sp spider sense. I think it was more of his, more focused on his superhuman strength as Spider-Man and his, you know, his, his web slaying skills. What I also liked about the Spider-Man movie is that it clearly caters to millennials. For instance, in the beginning of the film, Peter was actually vlogging, so, you know, of course, being a vlogger myself, that really appealed to me. If you watched this and you haven't watched the movie yet, I'm so sorry, uh, spoiler alert, but if you have, I hope uh, this review makes you think about the movie more and how it made you feel and how you would talk about, talk about it to your friends. Obviously, I am not uh, a big comic book uh, fan geek, so... I apologize if you know the, this review isn't as you know detailed as others would. I mean, as comic book lovers um, would have done. But I do have like a very you know like a basic idea of you know the, the Spider-Man story. I mean, I used to read Avengers comics as a kid, but those were my brother's comic books, so it's very superficial. And I, I admit I had to do a bit of research before doing this review. These are just my views, my personal views of the movie and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, you know what to do. Um, hit the like button, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, I mostly do vlogs, but from time to time I do, uh, I will be doing more reviews like this, hopefully in the future, if, it, if you like this. And sometimes some product reviews too, and travel videos. Hit like, hit subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Till next time, bye guys. But actually, if, if you watch the movie, 